across social media feeds, design magazines, famous paintings, and subway ads, adorning windowsills across America and all over the world. She is the celebrity of houseplants. She is the Monstera, and she is iconic. The Monstera is like your prettiest, nicest, most popular friend. Everybody loves her. Great hair, great personality, 10 out of 10. According to All About Gardening's Google Trend analysis of the last five years, the most searched for houseplant on Google in America has been, you guessed it, the Monstera Deliciosa. And for the record, yes, there are about 50 different varieties of this plant, but for efficiency's sake, I'm just gonna refer to her by her first name, okay? But what's with the Monstera Deliciosa? What is this fad about? Let's take it back a bit. Excuse me, I'm sorry I hit you. Business exploded and is still holding strong. The popularity of houseplants grew widely across the nation. There's never too many plants. I want to start with figuring out when did we all collectively decide we were obsessed with houseplants? If we're to travel back in time, we'll find that ornamental plant decor has been around forever. The Babylonians, the Romans, the ancient Chinese, and the Japanese, they all experimented with this novel concept of harnessing nature indoors waving this around like crazy today. Using plants as an intentional feature of interior design is a bit more of a modern concept. Thanks to improvements in household architecture, more light, more windows, more climate control, indoor water access, etc., plants have had a better chance at thriving indoors, especially plants with tropical origins like the Monstera. Still, Houseplant obsession was kind of niche, a whimsical hobby. And while our evolutionary human appetite for nature's beauty has been well-established and well-documented, maintaining plants indoors up until recently was more seen as a special interest for green thumbs. And then for the everyday person, indoor plants were more just an occasional feature. You put it on a desk, you tuck it in a corner, subtle, understated, just a whisper of a plant. The maximalist parlors of the Victorian era and the architectural embrace of nature in the mid-century era, those were particular instances of horticultural aspiration in interior design, but still nowhere near the fervor of today's houseplant mania. Okay, these bugs are up in my face. Today we've got terms like Plant Mond, House Jungle, Hashtag Monstera Monday. In her 2021 article for The Atlantic, Megan Garber hilariously remarks on the house plant zeitgeist. Where's the line between, oh, they have some plants, and whoa, they are plant people. I'm not quite sure, but I am sure that we long ago crossed it. When did having plants become a whole personality? I mean, I'm down, I am down. But when did it happen? In 2017, Pantone released Greenery as their color of the year. Leatrice Eisman, the Color Institute's executive director, explained the choice, citing tough times. Greenery burst forth in 2017 to provide us with the reassurance we yearn for amid a tumultuous social and political environment. It symbolizes the reconnection we seek with nature, one another, and a larger purpose. Those words would echo throughout the next few years and again in 2020 when a global pandemic put the cherry on top of our already melting hot fudge sundae of societal woes. In the years since the Pantone announcement, house plant demands have surged, pushing the whole gardening industry to grow by over 50%. In an article for Bloomberg, Matthew Boyle credits millennials. American millennials have been accused of dooming all sorts of things, but the cohort is credited with reviving the once moribund market for houseplants. Plants have become the new pets, fulfilling a desire to connect with nature and the blossoming wellness movement. Speaking of wellness movements, by now it should be clear to you that the plants make people happy science is indeed literal science. Plants are mood boosters, stress relievers, productivity benefactors, Interaction with plants is scientifically proven to improve our well being, and taking care of them is therapeutic. But millennials know this already. We are the recipients and purveyors of a modern, well researched, well marketed wellness industry. We drink water, we wear sunscreen, we go to therapy, and we buy tons and tons of houseplants. And that brings me to a little term I found floating around the interior design world lately. 
Ever heard of biophilic design? Of course you have. You're brilliant. Biophilic design has taken all that nature as wellness, science, and philosophy, and turned it into design principles for interior design and building architecture. This design style has become one of the most popular interior design trends, as it not only encourages your houseplant obsession, but also teaches you how to create harmony between your plants and all your other stuff. And if I could vote for one plant to be the ambassador of this design style, guess what it would be? Hailing from the equatorial rainforests of Central and South America, the Monstera is a surprising champion of the biophilic movement. Despite the specific climate of its origins, the Monstera enjoys a pretty comfortable life in most interior environments around the world. The plant fits in with literally any interior design style. Its dynamic silhouette is fluid and organic as much as it is clean and geometric making it perfect for rooms really of any style. The Monstera can be as minimalist or as maximalist as you want. And if the ultimate goal of biophilic design is to help us feel closer to nature in our everyday spaces, I mean, it helps to have a plant that makes it so dang easy. Medium light, but more or less will do. Water every one to two weeks. Normal humidity is fine. That's a pretty chill plant. This plant can freaking hang. The Monstera is remarkably gentle in what it requires of us. It's a plant that's happy to just be, and it rewards us even when we really don't deserve it. This bad boy sprouts new baby leaves all the time. One of the most popular phrases on the internet to come out of the houseplant boom is the phrase urban jungle. In interior design, the term refers to a maximalist aesthetic of lush indoor greenery. Funny enough, social media is its own jungle of sorts where the algorithm can pick up on even the most marginal interest in, say, houseplants and turn your whole feed biophilic. And when you scroll past beautifully curated images of spaces overflowing in green, does an inner voice not emerge telling you that you're meant to be a plant parent? The internet's role has been massive in popularizing and hashtagging the very aesthetic of houseplant worship. And the Monstera plant has been a consistent muse. Speaking of muses, the Monstera has also been a frequent flyer in the works of Henri Matisse, which has also had an interesting internet resurgence. The plant's effervescent personality, flirtatious abundance, wabi-sabi-like imperfection make it the perfect muse for the late French artist, whose style is so characteristically playful and organic. And of course, the Monstera has been featured all over product advertising, web marketing, wallpaper patterns, shower curtains, you name it. This plant has achieved ultimate cultural ubiquity. And when I say cultural ubiquity, what I mean is memes. Check out this entire Reddit community committed to Monstera content and Monstera memes. I want to save this for last because while it may seem obvious, I find it the most profound. The Monstera is nicknamed the Swiss cheese plant. The Monstera did earn this nickname because of the holes and gaps in the leaves, which I guess resemble cheese. Although personally, if we're gonna go the food metaphor route, I would have called it the English muffin of houseplants. Nooks and crannies, you're welcome. But scientifically, those nooks and crannies are called fenestrations. And fenestrations are what make the Monstera so recognizable and unique. And while there are a lot of theories about where they came from, leading scientific research indicates that fenestrations are a product of impressive evolutionary design. Basically, the Monstera adapted like a very good girl to capture what it could of sunlight from the bottom of the dark forest floor. It spread and split its leaves and with less surface area to support, it could also allow sunlight to pass through to leaves below. Basically, the Monstera adapts and thrives even when sunlight is uncertain, which is why it's probably killing it right now in your apartment. Perhaps this plant is so iconic because it represents what all of us humans strive for, to be able to thrive and survive even in the darkest places. That's a pretty fun metaphor. Big ups to Wayfair. Head on over to their site and check out their Monstera selection for yourself. And of course, if you're still intimidated by the idea of taking care of one, they've got fake plants too. Thanks for joining today. Remember to like and subscribe and join me next time for more iconic objects. And mwah, you did a great job.